Was it appropriate for Nancy Pelosi to give sort of a laundry list of Democratic accomplishments in this, her final speech as Speaker? I think it was, actually. I was on the floor when Dick Gephardt, then the Democratic Majority Leader, handed the gavel over to Newt, who was the new speaker. And while I haven't seen the remarks in 16 years, I remember it was mostly ceremonial, but he did, I can remember, he made a point about Democrats' commitment to wage disparities between you know, the working class people. So, and then Newt's speech, which was longer and bipartisan, nonetheless, he listed the contract with America. He talked about we were going to do welfare reform that hadn't been done. So I think that Nancy Pelosi's statements were within the historical traditions of what you say in a moment like and, this. And John Boehner's uh, speech as, as the new Speaker mm -hmm. of the House of Representatives, an historic speech, and you could see he was working hard to make sure he didn't break down and start crying because he is a very thank emotional... He is an emo God. emotional guy. <laughs> Nothing wrong with crying. It's an I'm, emotional I'm, moment. But not it, all the time. If, you, all, if you had 11 brothers and sisters, uh, you, you, you were, probably would have gotten have, emotional uh, too. I had three sisters, one brother, and yeah, you could cry, but not all the time. But no, look, he, he, look there's this whole notion of speech. Speaker Pelosi. This was her last speech as Speaker of the House. I see no issue with that. I don't think any. I don't think anybody out there is saying, "Oh my God, it's way too political." You're talking about a political body. You're talking about uh, Congress. You're talking about turning over from the Democrats to the Republicans. And so I see no issue with it at all. And if anybody has a problem, well, guess what? Deal with it. These are political animals. This is what we expect when it comes to our Congress. Yeah. There, there was this moment uh, when uh, she actually handed over the gavel to John Boehner. Let me play the clip. Sure. I now pass this gavel, which is larger than most gavels here, but the gavel of choice of Mr. Speaker Boehner. I now pass, pass this. <laughs> I now pass this gavel and the sacred trust that goes with it to the new speaker. God bless you, Speaker Boehner. <laughs> Was there a, a little dig there or something? I, you uh, know, there's an old tradition of talking about the gavel. When, when Newt got his gavel, he made some, I don't remember the detail, but he made some reference, this is made out of Georgia pine or something. And it's a, it's a light moment when the gavel right. gets passed. I, you know, I hate to, to not be uh, fighting on this one, but I think that this was all perfectly... This was a gavel um, that... This he, was appropriate. He got it from friends yeah. of his back they, in they Ohio. Often, they often do. It's a special occasion, and people talk about it. One word, levity. First of all, also, you're talking about a female speaker. She's saying, wait a minute, this thing is a huge gavel here. No big deal. No. It's nothing wrong with members of Congress, Republicans, Democrats, actually laughing sometimes versus fighting. So I, I, I thought it was cute.